It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to learn how to solve a linear equation in seven simple steps. Here we go. Our seven steps to solve a linear equation. Step one, we're going to write the equation down. We're always going to show our work to avoid any errors. Step two, if necessary, we're going to clear the parentheses by using the distributive property. So we're going to look to see if there are parentheses on either side of the equal sign, and if so, we will distribute to clear. Step three, if necessary, we're going to combine like terms on each side of the equal sign. So here again, we're going to look to the left side of the equal sign and see if there are any like terms. Then we'll look to the right side. Are there any like terms? And if there are, we'll combine them. Step four. If necessary, we're going to collect variable terms to one side of the equal sign. So we're going to look to see if there's a variable term on the left and a variable term on the right. And if they are, we're going to decide to collect them either to the left using inverse operations or to the right. Step five. If necessary, we're going to collect constant terms to that opposite side of the equal sign. So we're going to look to see if there are constant terms on the left and on the right. And if so, we're going to collect using inverse operations to the right of the equal sign if our variable term is on the left. And if our variable term is on the right, we're going to collect constants to the left. Step six. If necessary, we're going to clear the coefficient of the variable term using inverse operations. What this means is if the coefficient of our variable term is something other than positive one, we are going to use inverse operations to force the coefficient to be positive one because we want to know what one x or x is equal to. And our final step, step seven, is to check our work. After all of these steps, we want to make sure we haven't made an error and that we have the correct solution. All right, we're ready to perform all seven steps on a, an equation. So here, is step one. We're going to write the equation. Here is our linear equation. This is going to require all seven steps so that you can see how this checklist works. So step two, we're going to, if necessary, clear parentheses by using the distributive property. We can see that we have parentheses on both sides. What that means to distribute is we're going to take this factor two thirds and we're going to multiply it to the x and to the negative six. And then on the right side, we're going to have our factor one third, and we're going to multiply it to the x and multiply it to the nine. All right, let's show what our equivalent equation is after we've distributed. So two thirds times x is two thirds x. Two thirds times negative six, two times negative six is negative 12. Divide by three is negative four. One third times x is one third x. And one third times positive nine is positive three. One times nine is nine, divide by three is three. This in step two results in equivalent equation to the given equation in step one. Moving on to step three. Step three is if necessary, combine like terms on each side of the equal sign. So I'm looking just at the left side of the equal sign and I can see that I have two constant terms. On the right side, I also have two constant terms. So in step three, we are going to add and subtract. So let's bring in our equivalent equation. Negative four add seven is positive three. Positive three subtract four is negative one. So here's my equivalent equation, again, to the original in step one. Step four, if necessary, we're gonna collect variable terms to one side of the equal sign. So we're looking, we're gonna identify our variable terms on each side of the equal sign, and two thirds is larger. So I'm always gonna go to the larger side. We're gonna collect to the left. That way I won't have a negative coefficient. So to do this, I wanna create a zero pair on the right. So that means I'm gonna subtract one third x from the right, 
And what I do to the right, I must also do to the left. So I'm going to subtract 1 3rd x from both sides. 1 3rd x subtract 1 3rd x is a zero pair. And that eliminates the variable term on the right, and we've collected it to the left. So let's bring in our equivalent equation. 2 thirds x subtract 1 3rd x is 1 3rd x. Add 3, bring that down. And over here, that's zero, so all I'm left with is negative one. And we're ready for step five. Step five, if necessary, collect constant terms to the opposite side of the equal sign. Our constant terms here are positive three and negative one. These are terms without a variable, they're just constant. To do this, because my variable term is on the left, I'm gonna collect the constant terms to the right, which means I need to make a zero pair on the left. The opposite of positive three is negative three. So I'm gonna subtract three from each side. Bring in my equivalent equation, identifying my zero pair, zero. So I bring down my one third x and negative one, negative three are negative four. And we're ready for step six. Step six. If necessary, clear the coefficient of the variable term using op inverse operations. So we're looking at the coefficient. Here, our coefficient is one third. To clear that, I'm gonna multiply by its reciprocal. One third times three is one. Anytime you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, you get one, and that's what I'm looking for, one x or x. So three times one third x, is just x. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So I say our solution is x equals negative 12. Step 7 is going to have me check to make sure that x equals negative 12 is a true solution to the given equation. To do this, we're going to take our value of negative 12 and replace the variable x in the equation with negative 12. So let's rewrite this with x replaced with negative 12. So x is now negative 12 on both sides of the equation. Now we're just going to use order of operations to simplify the expression on the left and to simplify the expression on the right to see if I have a true statement. So the first step I'm gonna do is simplify the parentheses. Negative 12 subtract six, bringing in my equivalent equation. Negative 12 subtract 6 is negative 18. Negative 12 add 9 is negative 3. Now the next step is after we've done parentheses, we're going to do our multiplication. So we're going to do 2 thirds times negative 18 and 1 third times negative 3. 2 times negative 18 is negative 36. Divide by 3 gives me negative 12, bring down our add seven. One third times negative three, one times negative three is negative one, negative three, sorry, divide by three is negative one. And then we're gonna subtract four. All right, now we're gonna do our last. We're going to know that we have negative 12 and negative one from our multiplication. Negative 12 and seven is our next step which gives me negative five, negative one subtract four, negative five. And negative five does indeed equal negative five. So it checks, we have a true solution. So bring down our check and here are our seven steps to get our solution of x equals negative 12. And there you have it. Those are the seven steps to solving a linear equation. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day and come back soon.